Hello, Generals. B2 here. And I get this question all the time. B2, like I want to get started playing Conflict of Nations. How do I do it? And so you'll see I prefer to play on the PC. The mobile is a little bit wonky to play. I think mobile is great in a pinch, but I think PC you're going to get a little bit more of the screen. You're going to get a little easier click of the mouse. And then, of course, mobile will be played when you're just not physically at a PC or you don't have a PC, right? So anyway, you're going to go um, load up conflictofnations.com. You're gonna click on the new games tab, and then you're gonna pick the games. Now in the beginning, if you've not leveled up, there's a tutorial and you won't have all the options of these games. So just play that intro. I think it's like, where, let me see if I can find one of them. Uh, it's called Flashpoint. And so you'll play a couple of Flashpoints, learn the game, and then it will kick you into a menu that gives you um, more choices for the game. So again, if you want to buy gold in game, uh, they'll throw up these discount tabs all the time. Uh, I don't buy a ton of gold, but I do use it from time to time. It is necessary. And you're going to get the security council. I'll show you what that means. So let's say that I wanted to come down here and pick this game. Let's say there's 57 spots here and I click join. It's going to say, are you a cheater? And you're going to say no and join the game. Now it's going to kick you into another screen and now allow you to basically pick your country. And so you can hover over and click select. It'll tell you it's a medium sized nation. It'll tell you the military doctrine. Now don't get hung up on the doctrine. Not so important in the beginning. You will figure out your play style over time and you will have a preferred doctrine, but it's not a make or break in the early game. In your first few early games, you just want to learn how the game works, what buttons to click, what to build, and then you get once you get some knowledge, you start drilling down specific. So let's say that I'm going to pick DR Congo um, just because I already have a DR Congo game going. I would click OK. And the next thing you'll see is the screen which loads up DR Congo on here, right? So, um, now I've been in this game and I've done a couple of moves already, but I'm going to show you what those are. And then uh, obviously I'm in a coalition here with um, Ethiopia. That's Ice Pizza on the Discord server. Uh, really, really good player. I would recommend you friend him and you ask him to play games with him. Uh, you won't be disappointed and he'll coach you and show you a couple of the moves too. So um, the first thing you'll notice is that there are some smaller countries. When I click on them, you're going to see the computer player here. Um, those are typically, well, they are always one, one um, city, or I think some might have two. No, I think they're all one cities. Um, those won't turn into players. Eventually, if you get into a game early, you're going to click on here. It'll have computer on here for Kenya, but I know Kenya is a player nation because it's got five cities. And so that's this silhouette here. Those are important. What you want to try to do is get out early and grab these AI provinces and extra cities. The reason those are important is every province you take has $81 a day and 15 of the um, the troops, basically. You convert the troops into a unit. Um, so if you expand early into these AI countries, it almost gives you an advantage, right? If you play a country that has more cities, like if you get the US, you have more cities than if you get DR Congo. I have five. The US, I think, has nine or even 10. I'd have to count them up. Um, and I can show you on the map, right? So the person who got the US is going to have New York, Washington, New Orleans, St. Louis, Chicago, Portland, and Los Angeles. They have seven, right? Seven's a huge, huge, huge advantage on the start. And then I think one of the biggest ones is Russia. And I can tell you that's St. Petersburg, Moscow, Arkhangelsk, Volograd, Rostov-on-Don, Nizhny, Yekaterin, Novobersk, and down here, Vladivostok, nine cities to start with. I mean, that's a huge, huge advantage. The problem is you have to cover so much territory that they assume that you're going to lose a couple of cities early in the game, right? So uh, anyway, getting back to DR Congo, when you get in the game, you're going to see the first thing up here is kind of a, a communication and message system. This is where you'll want to come in and grab the Security Council access. It is not expensive. It's 30 bucks for the entire year. Here's what it does for you. First of all, you get to go into here and talk trash in, um, in where is it at? In the newspaper, right? <laughs> Which is probably the biggest one. People jump in here and start talking some, some smack in here. Um, not so much in this game yet, but some of them will have like 40 and 50 messages on day one and people start role playing as a country. It's, it's actually quite laughable. <laughs> so uh, you'll also be able to go into your diplomacy menu and look for messages. And so Germany, uh, what's your Discord name? Wait, are you a YouTuber? I, I get that a lot. People are like, are you a YouTuber? 
Um, but anyway, up here is where you'll find that. You'll find what day it is, what time it is in the game. The time is the time is very essential at midnight or or 23:59 when it changes over to 0000. zero, zero, zero. In the One X games, that's when the rogues will look at the city and determine if it's below 34%, you have a chance of going your city growing rogue, which means it puts two enemy units in there. And if you have nothing in that city, it will actually take your city from you. Then you got to go back and recapture it. Again, that platform is 34%. So if you keep just enough troops to break the 34% line, um, the city stops smoking and the chance of the morales goes down. Uh, the morale will go up. You know, if you have units in that city, it's also determined on how many countries you're at war with. And there's a couple other factors, but you can actually go into the city. You can click on this or hover on this. eye, click on it and it will tell you the morale is 70 percent. It's rising um, and there's no factors on it. Right. Meaning that there's no if it was below the, the percent, if the morale was low enough, it would say that there's an X amount of percent, 33, 50 percent of going rogue. And that's when you need to put units in there to lower that percent. That's kind of more like an intermediate thing, but you'll you'll very quickly quickly figure that out. Um, so again, like in the very beginning, I'm going to move my troops over here to try to take this um, Cabinda, and then I'm going to try and take Lusaka over here from Zambia, because these three in the corners are AI countries. And so up here, you can see he's staging his units to come back. It looks like he's going to bring them all down, and he's going to kind of go into Kenya, unless Kenya joins the coalition, right? So uh, a lot of factors in there. What you try to do early is get a coalition that surrounds you so that you can connect these borders, right? So if Kenya was on our team, this actually would be a solid green mark all the way around up into Ethiopia. I can zoom in and out here for you. Um, it would be solid green all the way through these borders, and I wouldn't have to defend against this line here, right? Because if Kenya's on my team, I can move my troops out further and attack something different. It allows you, your coalition to focus in sort of areas certain areas and if you have a strong coalition leader that's going to make a huge difference for you early game all right great so now you understand morale now you understand the, the benefits of a coalition you can have five people in your coalition the objective then is to get to these vps here right so i currently own 136 on the map all the way around here um, combined with ethiopia the two of us own 136 out of 2960. as our cities grow and as our provinces grow, that number will rise. And so you're trying to get ahead to 2960. The more members you have in your coalition, the higher this number is, up to five, then takes about, I don't know, 5,300 VPs to win. Um, so if you grow your cities really big to eights, nines, tens, elevens, that also helps. And so you just can't stop building your cities and growing them, and you definitely don't want to lose them, right? So uh, the next thing that you're going to do is now starting to build. Uh, you'll want to look at the top here, and this is where you keep track of your warheads, your deployable gear, but these are the main things right here. These are your resources. And so on these resources now, um, you, you can't overspend on your resources, right? You need fuel. You need all these different things to go in. So if I come down here and look, I now have um, barracks in each city, meaning I can build. So if I click and shift, it highlights all the cities. I can come back in and now start to build all of my troops all the way out, right? So now if I go into the individual city, you'll see that I have an arms industry and a motorized infantry. The reason that's important is that early game, you need units to um, expand and you definitely need units to defend. Uh, people get wise to see on the map how many people you're attacking in the news. They can go in and tell who you've attacked and if they feel like you have too many units, they'll just get like, they'll put all their units here and they'll roll a 10 stack through and take all your cities, right? So you gotta be careful that you're not overextending and you're still building some defensive units. Um, I'll get into more of that in later videos as far as like how to defend what's being played on the board. But now let's talk about building. So you saw what I did as far as um, being able to shift click into here, but I wanna go through and talk about the individual buildings, right? So in order to do um, motorized infantry, I have to build an army base. So this unit, if I go and look, it's this unit here, the motorized infantry. I can also have mechanized, basic Marines, basic airborne, basic special forces, the Spetsnets, basic national guard units. If I come in here and look at it and research on here and hover, it'll tell me in order to build a basic mechanized unit, I need an army base two, a recruiting office one, and I need to have research basic mechanized. So I come over here, and I look at this. Now, here's the mechanized. I can't research this until day two, which is fine because I still have to build a level two army base, and I may not even want to. Now, this is where it starts to get crazy because you can do any combination of these. What I'll tell you is 
be careful to see what's going on on the board and talk to the people in the game. If someone is very heavy planes or very heavy naval, you want to find the counter unit to that in order to protect yourself. So if someone has researched a ton of planes and has like stealth fighters and all this stuff, maybe they have bombers or whatever, you're going to come in here and you're going to look for a SAM launcher because once you get up to the highest level SAM launcher, it's going to see stealth aircraft, right? It's going to have a radar of 100, which is a very wide level, and then it's going to be anti-air for fixed wing and missiles. This won't um, defend against choppers, and if I click on the unit, it'll show you. Like, it doesn't have any defense rating against or attack rating against choppers, but it will each one you have. So if you have a stack of five of these, it's going to do five times 13. Now, there's modifiers. If this is in a jungle, it will defend at 25% lower, meaning that 25% of 13, you know, it was 75% of 13 would be your defense factor, basically. It's going to minus 25 off of that. So if you're on a jungle terrain, you'll want to move this off and put it into a different terrain or you're going to get a modifier. It's kind of mid-level also, um, mid-level to high-level strategy because a lot of people don't follow this. They just go and attack with the units and then, you know, you're, you're, you're on. So anyway, that will, you're going to have to go in here to the research tree and look and know kind of what's going on. If you're close to someone who's using a ton of choppers, you're going to come in, you're going to research the mobile anti-air, and you're going to get a unit that has a 9 attack against a chopper and a 7. The problem with this one is that the range is only 50, so it only shows stuff at half the distance of the SAM. And so you got to be particular about which ones. And look at all the modifiers here. A lot of negative modifiers to mobile AA, right? So, so be very, very careful on here and, and, and look at your units and see what the counters and what nuts are. You're probably going to have to play 10 games of this before you get really comfortable, understand the strategy, and that's okay, right? You'll also want to look at your coalition and see what your coalition is fighting with and what they're doing with. A lot of times you'll see someone who goes really heavy Navy and then someone else will go really heavy air and they'll support each other around the map and they'll move together on the map. What I choose to do is I get a lot of radars and a lot of anti-air stuff or SAMs um, and the theater defenses, right? And so what happens is, is I'll move my radars and I'll show my, my team on the map where other enemy units are in order to keep progressing on the map, locating uh, aircraft and all kinds of cool stuff. So, so anyway, uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about building now. So you know that when you come in here on the building, what the army base does. The air base is pretty obvious. That means you can do air units, right? And so once you come on here, it also gives you modifiers. And it will do, um, where was the modifier out on here? But yeah, resource production. So at level five, you get a 25% resource production. So if you're going to do aircraft in a city, and you go to level five and you're producing a thousand rare, now you're going to be producing 1,250 rare per day, which means you can get to higher level research quicker. So keep in mind, and the same thing is going to happen uh, with naval. And I, I don't have a naval city, but let me see if I can look. I can't look. Yeah, so anyway, I don't have a naval city, so I can't show you the naval side, but that also has a resource production on there. So let's go back in here. The recruiting office, that's pretty simple. It means you're going to get more. Uh, you're going to, it unlocks what you can build with some of the units already, but it's also going to give you more hit points in your town, and it's going to be a plus uh, resource modifier and a manpower generator, mobilization speed, and but it's going to cost more to update. So you'll be able to pump out more units when you have a recruiting office. That's pretty self-explanatory. Arms industry means that you are going to have a higher resource production. And I have a uh, video specifically about resource production and how to manage it, so you can go look that up. But just know that these are some of the things you're going to want to build early because that's going to allow you to build more and to build your city faster, right? Um, Secret Weapons Lab, this one is needed to go into some of the elite units and warheads. So eventually you're going to be doing Secret Weapons Lab. Um, they don't show up on the map, so like your enemy won't know that you actually have them until you start producing the units that need that, and then it's too late, right? Uh, military hospital, I would say most people build a, a military hospital in their capital. Now what that does is that will give you a plus five hit point every 25 hours. So if you have a 15 hit point unit that has one hit point left and you move it back to your city, three days later it'll be back to full hit, 
full health. Now that means you didn't have to remake that unit and spend those resources. All you did was move it to the hospital and heal it. And then you can send it back to the battlefield. Very, very important strategy to have somebody in your coalition with a hospital. It will allow you to pull units back off the map, fly them into a hospital, heal them up in a couple days, shoot them back out and get them back on the battlefield. Um, the next one is the underground bunkers. Very important for um, defense. If someone's using um, rocket launchers or ships and bombing, you can come into here and at level five, it takes a negative 73% damage and it gives a plus 50 on the morale. So if you have a spy in your city that's demoralizing you and that's kind of a mid-level uh, move too when you can generate spies, but you, you can counteract that by putting in bunkers and raising morale in there. So um, I would say that... Um, um, and it protects population as well, right? So, so also very, very good to have. So kind of think about that as part of your strategy. Now, when you get to about 30 days of in-game play on this, you're going to have more resources than you can spend, and you're going to be able to trade and buy from the market, and your allies will have different levels of, of supplies you can trade across too. So what I would say is really look at investing in your cities and fortifying them and building a defense and raising your building level. It's all based on this um, population level. As the population level gets bigger, see here's a six, then the VP, victory point value is a six, which increases the victory point value up here, right? So see how that plays in the more cities you have and the more you build. Now, next level for that is annexing a city. And when you're in here, you'll see the annex button up here, as well as the relocate headquarters. If someone takes your headquarters, you'll wanna rebuild a headquarters somewhere else. Not having a headquarters will severely affect your morale, right? So you can annex another city, and what that means is that now these up here, these multipliers will now become as if you owned the city and it was a homeland city. So typically when you take another city that's worth fuel that's not your homeland city, this would only be worth like two, three, four hundred per day on here. But once you annex it, these totals will jump up and you can get more resources out of there. So like really advanced players you'll see will jump in and annex five, six, seven cities once they get the resources to start annexing, it's it's a huge snowball effect. You get three or four annex cities in of the resources that you're short on, and wow, that could be a game changer within a week because now you've built up the arms industries and you're getting just three and four times the resources your enemy has, which means you can potentially have three and four uh, times the firepower in your attacking, right? So anyway... Um, that's basically the gist of how to start the game, how to walk through what you should be doing. I'm going to put out some more videos in regards to like, you know, days one through seven where I started and what I accomplished in those days. And I can tell you this, like the next step for me is to pump out about 20 infantry units and swarm the map all around me before the other people build because they're going to be spending their resources building their cities and i'm going to be spending it on attacking and then in week two i can pull back and now that i've got 20 25 cities can now sit and focus on annexing and the rest of my team is also expanding at the same time so you'll see uh, hopefully we're going to add some people into the coalition here let's see where we at here uh, we do have nigeria applied i'm always wary of people who have the user player name that's typically a newer player who has not put their name in yet and they're just incredibly unpredictable, right? A lot of them show up, rip, <laughs> I like the description. So a lot of them show up, they start a game and leave, and they end up being very easy targets because the computer will take over. The computer doesn't really grow. The computer will defend and spread units all over the map, which is annoying because then you have to travel in two and three unit packs to take land, whereas a player will typically keep their units in the cities and you can actually take all their land with very, very few casualties. So anyway, um, if you were looking to join for a Conflict of Nations game with a group of players, you can look in my description, and then there is a link or an invite link to the Discord, and you can come in and join us. So I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, enjoy, and any questions, hit us up in the Discord or the comments. See ya.